Hi. Now, in an earlier video, I showed you this series. It's called McLaren series, and it's very useful for expanding functions as what we call power series. And I'm going to look at in this video how we expand e to the power x as a series of terms like this. And at the end of the video, what we'll do is we'll compare the graph of e to the x to several approximations to this graph. So we start by saying let f of x equal our function here, which in this example is e to the x. And for the first term here, we need to work out what f of 0 is. So it follows that f of 0 is going to equal e to the power 0. In other words, 1. And then to get the next term, we need to find the first differential of f of x, f dash of x then. And f dash of x is going to be e to the power x again. So it follows that f dash of 0 must equal e to the power 0, which again is 1. We next need to work out what the second differential is going to be, f double dash x, or f2 prime if you like. Okay. Well, if we differentiate f dash x with respect to x, we get e to the x. And again, it follows that f double dash of 0, that's going to be e to the 0, in other words, 1. And if we keep this going, you'll find that f treble dash of x, again, that's going to be e to the x, and it follows that f treble dash of 0 is going to equal e to the power 0, which is 1. So in general, if we kept this going, we'd find that f differentiated r times over, okay, of x, well, that's going to be e to the x. And so it follows that f differentiated r times over, when you substitute x equals 0 in, is going to give you e to the 0, which equals 1. So pretty boring here, okay, same result all the time. It's not going to be like that for all functions, but as a starting one, this is a good example just to try. So when we look at McLaurin's expansion, we therefore find out that e to the power x is going to be identical then to f0, which is 1, so you've got 1, plus f dash 0 of x, well that's going to be another 1 times x, or just simply x, and then if we fill in the other values, f double dash of 0, well that 2 was 1, so you've just got x squared over 2 factorial, x squared over 2 factorial. And then you've got, similarly, x cubed over 3 factorial. And it would go on like this, plus x to the power 4 over 4 factorial, and so on. All the way through where your general term was x to the power r over r factorial and plus, and so on. So there's our expansion for e to the x. Now I did say that we'd look at graphs of this. I think this is quite useful just to see. If we were to draw the graph of e to the power x, okay, it would look something like this, crossing the y-axis at 1 here. Now suppose we took the first two terms here, 1 plus x. Well, if we were to draw the graph of y equals 1 plus x, it's going to be this straight line here. Not very close at all to this graph here, although the values around 0, when x is 0, they're going to be fairly close, okay, to e to the x, but you can see it differs quite a lot when you get outside that range. But then suppose we take the next three terms, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial. And we were to plot that graph. Let's see what happens, this quadratic. There you go, you get this graph here. And you can see that we've now got more of the curve closer to the red graph of y equals e to the power x 
for a wider range of values of x. And if we take the next four terms up to the x cubed over 3 factorial and plot that graph, the cubic graph is going to look something like this. And can you see, this is looking quite impressive now, especially on this stretch of the graph. OK, you can see it's fairly close to y equals e to the power x. It seems to wander away down this end. But what happens if we just keep this going? Well, I've got one more example where I've taken it up to x to the power 6 over 6 factorial. The graph I get is this one. And you can see how close this is now to y equals e to the power x. It almost looks like it's on top of it over this stretch here, but then it comes away just over here. So the more terms that we obviously have in this series, the closer we're going to approximate our values to e to the power x. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea how we can use Maclaurin series then to expand some function of x in terms of a power series. And hopefully, uh, if you're having problems with any other functions, then you'll take a look on my website, examsolutions.net, where you should find examples of other functions uh, out there. OK?